Hello, I'm Yummy Mommy, and I'm giving you another segment of For Your Help. Today we're going to talk about ginger. Ginger is this little tuber that you see me putting in front of the camera. And it's a very common thing that people eat when they're seasoning their food or when they want to make a smoothie or they want to just have that spicy, hot, sweet taste of ginger. It really makes things quite tasty and quite wonderful to eat. But we want to look at ginger as a little more than that. Often we need to realize that the things that have been prepared for us here on earth by the Father God, the universe, or whatever you prefer to the Father as, they have a dual purpose. They taste good, we enjoy them, but they're also necessary for us. They're necessary to keep up the vitality of the body, to keep us alive. So while we do enjoy eating many of these things, it's very important to understand these things also give us life. Ginger reduces inflammation. Now, there's that word inf inflammation again. Inflammation is pain, redness, uh, an ability to, uh, to smell, joint movement, difficulty, swollen, fever, or hot areas of the body, white blood cells, or, you know, your major infantry person. But oftentimes, you know, we can't have a conversation with uh, white blood cells. We can't have a conversation with anything that exists in our bodies. We have to rely on signaling uh, and hope that the body gets what we're trying to say. That is, if we're trying to really put forth an effort to make ourselves healthy. So many oftentimes we signal the body and the white blood cells just don't get the clear message. And so sometimes they take friendly fire. Something happens and the immune system may turn upon itself. And that's called autoimmune. So we have to be careful as we move forward in trying to take these different powders and different things that we will be discussing because if you have autoimmune problems, if you have autoimmune problems, you kind of don't want to take immune boosters because you will kind of trigger something that we don't want to trigger. And I'm sure that those of you who have that understand what I'm talking about. But now, understand, sometimes you have things you don't know you have. And then try to get, trying to get better, um, a myriad of things may have happened that you didn't get to go to the doctor and you don't know. And then people get back on the this uh, internet and the media and go, oh, that thing doesn't work. Oh, that thing was bad. Oh, I tried to take that and it didn't do what they said it was going to do. But that's why we always recommend before you do anything, you may have allergies. You may have different ailments that are part of your medical history of your family that you may not be familiar that was there. And so often we can take things, they didn't work for us, and so we didn't discourage others from taking it. We have to remember that everybody is an individual. People react differently to different things, and people live their lives differently, you see. So remember, go to your doctor or your medical nutritionist or whomever does panels on your blood and find out if you have allergies, if it's okay for you to take certain things, how should you take it, how will it affect you? The most important thing that I am saying in all of these for your health segments is learn the American language, learn words, Google definitions, even if it's the simplest thing of a word that you have always been using all your life and you feel that you know the context in which it should be used, still look it up because you looking up words may save your life or someone else's life, may give you a greater insight and understanding of how you should take care of yourself 
and others. So let's get busy learning words and learning what they mean and learning what they mean to our existence because this is the most difficult thing because often we go to the doctor and we don't ask one question because we really don't know what's really being said to us. I said we because I meant me too. You see, me too. A very educated woman is in this situation that occurred in my life in many ways just lost. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not telling you in judgment. I'm telling you what I experienced in hope that you never will. And that's just love. So remember that ginger can keep your mouth healthy, you know, your gums and different things that can happen. It calms nausea, which is very important. And the last time we talked about the liver support. Now, ginger tends to support the kidney. Okay. Like they are pals, in my opinion. I'm not saying that I'm a medical doctor, so I'm not giving you medical information. I'm also, again, not asking you to take anything. You go to your doctor and figure out what it is that's okay for you to take. But we talked about that. We talked about the storage of glycogen. Glycogen, glycogen is a breakdown of different things into sugar. And sugar is the way that the body provides energy. So it breaks down a myriad of things into sugar so that you'll be able to have mobility. Of course, the liver makes what we call bile. And these kinds of things helped us to digest food. But we've had a rash of uh, reflux, acid reflux in this country. And it can be very dangerous. You can end up having an ulcer inside of the body, which is a sore. When a sore is in our, inside of a body, it's very different from sores that are outside of the body. You have air circulation. You have different things can come over that wound that is out here in the free air that can assist it to heal. When the sore is on the inside of the body, it's more difficult. And oftentimes, many things that may leave us wanting to live and may actually take our lives uh, begin with some ulcerated condition on any particular thing. The colon, you know, the pancreas has become a target. Many people are having problems with that. And so you have to be able to think about what you need to be able to produce something. Now, liver produces bile, but it's stored in the gallbladder. And then it releases to help to break down food. You see what I'm saying? These things are all important. You have excretions uh, of bellarubin. Bellarubin is a thing that uh, helps to excrete old blood, red blood cells. It's, it's very important that when things break down, we get rid of them, just like we do in the house. In our own homes, in our, in our closets, when things are no longer useful to us, we try to get rid of it. The same thing is happening on a daily basis with your body. When things go wrong in your body, your body tries to get rid of it. Okay? And you have to create a situation where the body is able to do that. You need water. Try not to take in too much alcohol because the pancreas can really suffer in those situations where we're taking in too much alcohol. And then if we can't properly break down the food in our bodies, and if that food is not high in nutritional value, then your body is actually living but starving. Think about that. Think about it. Often we eat every day. And people are being hospitalized, but they say there's no nutritional value in this person's body. And they have to keep you in there for months trying to feed you to get your situation. And the person may say to you, you know, you got so many months before you live because you've actually over the years been starving yourself. Not understanding whatever you are eating, whether or not it actually has any nutritive value. That's very important because that is the way the body rebuilds itself. It is the way it defends itself. It's just like bullets in a gun. If it doesn't ever get loaded, if something jumps you, you just, it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? So we have to remember that these particular organs, they do very important things. To keep us alive, keep us well, keep us engaged, keep us enjoying the things that we love. So it soothes sore muscles, 
eases arthritic symptoms, curbs cancer growth, lowers blood sugar, eases period pain. Some of those of you who have that, lowers cholesterol, protects against disease in general. You see what I'm saying? Because it can help those things that need to fight these different things that are trying to invade your body. It can strengthen them to be able to do that. It relieves indigestion, stimulates circulation, reduces gas, reduces the rhinovirus, which causes the common, which can cause the common cold. You see, so it work if you if you're feeling a little sneezy and whatever. So often people go and get ginger tea. That's why, because it helps to fight those bacteria, and it has kidney protection. It regulates body fluids, blood pressure, regulates blood chemistry. Now you might say, well, "What the heck is blood? What are we talking about here?" Uh, blood chemistry. Blood chemistry. I know sometimes when you get dehydrated, they tell you about electrolytes. So when people take your blood out and look out what it's made of, what you have too little of, what you have too much of, sometimes you have you become a diabetic because you have too much sugar. Sometimes you get dehydrated because you have no electrolytes. Sometimes you're eating too much fat and the body's not able to regulate itself to get rid of it. Okay? And sometimes you're making too much sugar or some negative enzyme that's uh, uh, unable to do in a function that it should be doing or it inhibits another function. You see what I'm saying? So, and also you have the removal of organic waste. You gotta get the stuff out of your body. It cannot remain there. You can't keep things forever. You gotta let it go. Electrolytes are like salt or sodium, potassium, chloride, glucose, and sugar. Uh, an important thing is what I call the pretty min minerals. Now, you get a lot <laughs> Of people who may be blessed to be have a baby to carry a baby and they won't take the prenatal pills and those prenatal pills are usually packed with a lot of minerals and those are what I call the pretty the pretty baby minerals you see because you um off these things I say and I really believe make your baby really pretty okay and so um they help to develop the child in a way where he has good skin and he's healthy and his muscles are developed right. His brain uh, really has developed and he has often a good head full of nice hair. Not, I don't know what good hair is, but just hair on his head. And I'll, don't get mad with me because you don't want to take your pills. Some people, some of the young people say, it's just too big. We'll cut them in half because... When you have the baby, don't say those minerals are necessary. Things like magnesium, zinc, copper, iodine, those are minerals that really help to make the baby the pretty baby you want it to be. Okay? And so remember, 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 you don't just build a baby because you get up every day and you breathe. You need nutrients, you need minerals, you need all kinds of things that will build the cells that create the baby. And you need to be familiar with when the baby's growing his brain, when the baby's growing the spine, when the baby's growing his bones. Because those times may need you to be a little quieter, may a little more attentive to nutrients and minerals, and a little more or less active. And while you get these important parts of the baby's development happening within. So now, I want you to stay aware of a little ginger because it can do a lot of things. But again, people have allergies uh, and whatever that may occur that they may not be able to do it. So maybe you should check. I'm not telling you what to do and see if it'll be okay for you to take it. I hope that you enjoyed this segment about ginger and its uses. Of course, you can boil it as a tea. You can put it in your food. You can put it in a smoothie, fresh. Just take it in a way that makes you comfortable and makes you happy. Because it's going to do, if it agrees with you, and if you agree that you should take it, some wonderful things for you. Some wonderful things that help you to accomplish the things uh, that you want to accomplish. Remember to thank God for all things. And remember... To, if you liked what I said, and give me a wave <laughs> in the comments. So 
I'll see you next time on For Your Health.